Yeah, so once again, since we are recording, so let's do good morning again. So we are churning on two Murlis. The years 1972 are very beautiful years because these are the foundation years which were the foundation stone for the service abroad to begin. And this is how the double foreigners came into knowledge as well. And there were three important souls. There are many important souls, but let me start this with a story. And this story is particularly of that time. So Sister Jayanti, Sister Nirmala, that is Dr. Nirmala Didi from Gyan Sarovar, who's there right now in Gyan Sarovar, and Vedanti Didi. So it was these formative years when all these three sisters, that time, they were not the regional coordinators of whichever region they are now in. They were just in Madhuban, Mount Abu. And Baba was telling them, go to different places and serve. Sister Jayanti had a beautiful background in the UK because she was eight years old when she was, when the parents immigrated to UK from Pune particularly. So she was already well settled there used to the environment, knew the British, the Brits, how they are. So, uh, well, let me first go to Nirmala Didi and Vedanti Didi. Both these were very naive because both were Indian bodies raised in Nirmala Didi in Mumbai. Again, quite practical and forward that way, well aware of the modern lifestyle of cities. And Vedanti Didi also, she served in uh, Mumbai for a while, for two years before she went to Africa. Nirmala Didi for Australia and the Asia Pacific, that side. So let me come to Jayanti Didi again. So Jayanti Didi told Baba, Avyak Bab Dada, and, and Dadi Prakash Mani was also sitting there, that Baba, there's no service. Why am I sharing these stories is because uh, these are the souls who have started the service there, but to start with, there was no service. And service, when we look at the subject, it's a big depth of the service subject, because today we are revising yesterday and day before, the 20th and 22nd November, 72 Murlis. So Sister Jayanti said, Baba, there is uh, no service in UK. What should I do? Can I come back? And Dari Prakashmani was sitting there as well. Same thing, Nirmala Didi said, Baba, in Australia, I don't know anyone, and I'm all alone. What service to do, I don't know. Please guide. And then Sister Vedanti, whom we very fondly call Vedanti Didi, she was like one step ahead. She said, Baba, there is no service in Africa. Please call me back to Madhuban. And I don't want to leave Madhuban. Why? Because I would stay here and clean the utensils. In Hindi, we call it Bartan Manjana, right? I'll do that job. But please let me not go to Africa or because there's nothing, no service over there. So see, all these three great sisters, what we call Amahan, Maharathis, what we call in Hindi. <laughs> so what did Baba through Dadi Prakashmani tell them? So to Sister Jayanti, Baba said, if there is no service in UK for the moment, you do self-service. And uh, there it had begun like that, that people, Jayanti Didi used to share this all the time, that people used to shut the doors on their face. They never wanted to listen. Why, why do you want to come? Someone invite with a badge. We are not interested in Raj Yoga meditation. So those are those formative years, particularly from 1972 onwards till 74, till the time when Dadi Janki was then instrumental in expanding the service in UK. So those around one and a half to two years, Jayanti Didi did intense tapasya. And that tapasya was the foundation of the service in UK. So because Baba told her, you do self-service, my dear child, which means your Amritvela should be perfect. Your Murli should be perfect. You practice what the Murli is saying. Do a lot of tapasya. Give a lot of time for self. That is Jayanti Didi. Second, Nirmala Didi. So Baba told her through Dadi Prakashmani, don't you know you're a lioness? And lioness or lion, that clan of animals, they always travel alone. They don't need 
anyone with, with them to move around in the forest. So similarly in the Asia Pacific region where you are, now move along alone, only in the remembrance of the one. And Vedanti Didi, who had said that, Baba, please let me come back to Madhuban. I will clean the utensils here, can't go to Africa. Baba told her that you are on this African soil where it is untouched because this race, this population, they are not aware of Baba and it is your job. And how will you do that when you become Bab Saman? And this something really triggered in Vedanti Didi as well that, yes, I have to do this because Baba is wanting me to do by becoming Bab Saman. So in short, uh, it's if you just look at these three examples, they were all in 1972 at almost the same times, all these three sisters, Baba told them to leave India and go and settle wherever they are now. And they have become the regional coordinators, what we call the RCs now. And Seva has expanded to such an extent that we can't even imagine now that at one point of time, will it be like that? And one more important thing before I go in the main Murli is, that if you look at these two Murlis, Baba is telling in 1972 itself, when even the foreign service hasn't started, that what is your service? Service is not just merely giving knowledge to people, the seven day course, or doing just service at the center of cleaning, brooming, whatever. Service is a big subject. And Baba is telling, as all of you all have read it day before yesterday, that your uh, if, if, Baba, if Baba is saying the mirror, what I must say now Baba is saying in the last Murlis of 2017, when the Avyakt part finished through Dadi Gulzar because the chariot was not doing well then. So Baba says, your sthiti is your seva. Your stage is your service. And the same thing Baba is saying in this Murli that the mirror of your stage is service. So how do I develop my this stage? So if I can ask this, because I'm supposed to facilitate this session, not give you a lecture. So what do you think Baba has said in this 20th November 72 Murli? How to develop my stage so that I become serviceable all the time? Anyone wants to share? From the Murli itself? You're pretty silent. So probably you all don't remember. Yeah. Uh, by being victorious over your subtle powers, that is your mind, intellect, and sanskars. Swaraj Adhikari. Right. Perfect. So perfect starts, which Rachna sister has started. That these are the three powers of the soul, the mind, intellect, and the sanskars. And I need to check myself to what extent have I become victorious on them. So when I say victorious on the mind, it means are still in any situation in life which comes, are still my thoughts racing? Why this happened to me? Why me? What is this happening in life? Why is it happening? So on and so forth. And all of us have gone through that unprecedented times. Yesterday, actually, we were having a workshop on punctuality. I remember we covered this, that am I ever ready in life? And when ever ready, sometimes many Brahmins feel the connotation is ready to leave the body and go to Baba. No, ever ready is, am I ever ready in all my powers and virtues? In the sense, anything which is happening unprecedented in my life, which I hadn't thought of before, say, for example, COVID, the past two, three years. Was I ready for that? I didn't even know something like that would happen. And when that happened to me, if COVID came to my house, everyone else had, was my mind racing or was I, was I able to accept it as it was? So that's being victorious through the mind. That's important. Second is on the intellect. The next faculty which comes immediately after mind is intellect. 
So can I have a rational intellect amidst chaos and crisis? Is my intellect able to make decisions which are appropriate for that situation? And here Baba says always in many murlis, he says, my dear child, be an embodiment of solutions, not an embodiment of problems. So when can I have a solution to a problem? Only when I'm clear minded inside, which Baba again says clean mind and clear intellect. So there you are. So am I victorious on that? And I'm sure the third one, the sanskars, is all of us know very well in detail. As Sister Rachna was saying, Swaraj Adhikari, which means, am I really able to have victory on my own sanskars? Are the sanskars playing on with me? Or am I able to play with sanskars? What is overtaking what? Am I subservient to my sanskars? I mean, I just keep using all those sanskars of, say, not even anger, but like irritation, frustration, comparison, jealousy. All these are there in all of us in some way or the other number wise. So am I able to get rid of them? Am I able to replace them with my original sanskars? Or I am still using them despite being a Brahmin and in this uh, Brahmin life for so many years, how many years each one would maybe. So I need to see, because Baba said that the one who is an instrument for world service cannot be having this, oh, this happened, Baba, ho gaya mujhse ye. Or vice versa, like gege, the language of gege in Hindi means, Baba, aap chinta mat karo, hum kar lenge, hum sampoona ban jayenge, which means becoming. Baba, don't worry, we'll become that. So these two languages Baba doesn't want to say doesn't want to hear from us. He wants us to become an <clears throat> embodiment of success and a master almighty authority. That's what he had mentioned in this mulli. This mulli was all rotating around how to be victorious on our, these three faculties or these three powers. And then Baba went on to say, service is a mirror of the stage of all of you. Service is a mirror of the stage. So people I remember always in the Sakar Murli's Baba says this very often, all these four subjects are, uh, see, are based one after the other. So first is knowledge, second is yoga, third is dharna, which is inculcation of what I'm hearing in Murli's. Through yoga, I'm able to inculcate in myself. And only when these three are perfect, it's only then my life, then my behavior, my actions would be a service for others. So therefore, Gyan ka darpan, which means in the mirror of the knowledge, I have to look at my stage. How much have I become an embodiment of being uh, in knowledge in my life, yoga in my life, and dharanas in my life. And that will set the stage of service. Before I go further and ask you all to share more, it reminds me again of another story related to service uh, about Mama. We are approaching Mama's month in the next two months. It will be Mama's day. We'll be celebrating on 24th of June, exactly two months from now. So uh, what did Mama uh, say when Mama actually used to, someone asked Mama actually, yeah, I remember that, Mama, you tell us which service is the best. So if I want to give, ask you as well this question, let's see how many answers come or what answers come and you all can share in the chat box if you wish. Or you can also, yeah, so people have started sharing. Thank you, Bridget. It's self. So, uh, okay, if you all can start writing your answers and let's see if I don't get that, then I'll give you a few options and then you can pick and choose on that. Let's go further. Anyone else wants to say? either say something or a very brief answer, which is the best service. Right, Rakhi Ben is saying Mansa Seva, okay, right. Anything else? Is Karmana Seva not important? Not Rakhi Ben, everyone I'm asking. So, so Radhamani is saying Swar Parivartan, okay. So again, same as Bijit, self. 
Balvinder is saying when I change my weakness. So yeah, so we are speaking about the service. So uh, I mean, if you divide the category of service, it's serving through the mind, which is Bansa Seva, Vacha and Karmana. Vacha is the serving, serving through your talk, through the lectures, through the course, which we take for people. And third is Karmana Seva, which is serving through your physical organs, like anything, it could be cooking a meal, Brahma Bhojan at the center, brooming, cleaning the center, all sorts of physical work which we do. So, okay, any other answers? Four of you have responded. Right, so Balvinder is again saying Mansa Seva, giving vibrations to all. Right, so Mama said, a very beautiful answer. Mama said at whatever <clears throat> time, whatever Seva is needed, at that point of time, that service is important. I think we have covered that in the past as well. So if it's a Brahma Bhojan being planned <clears throat> at the center, I need help in cutting the vegetables, washing them, cooking them, setting up the sort of uh, all those things for the fire to pick up and all those things. At that point of time, I say, oh, let me go and sit in meditation and do Mansa Seva. That's not appropriate. Similarly, when it's a yoga bhatti going on. So uh, let me just come back to this first thing. Why am I trying to do that when I'm needed in the kitchen to do the kitchen work for Brahma Bhojan? Why do I want to go and sit in meditation? Which means I probably don't want to do Karmana Seva. As simple as that. Vice versa. <clears throat> You're being called for a yoga bhatti. You want to sit in, you have to not want, you have to sit in the meditation continuously for how many hours, three hours, four hours, whatever it may be. And then you say, oh no, Didi, let me just go and help in the kitchen to prepare Brahma Bhojan. So what is that? Why am I not able to sit there when, it, when I'm supposed to sit there? It's because probably I feel, oh, I'm not, uh, my yoga is very poor. The moment I sit, waste thoughts go on and I go here and they might as well just forget the yoga and do some karma seva. So that's what is important, Mama said. And that shows that how much power in the soul is there to implement. Have I become victorious on my this racing mind? It's a yoga bhatti going on. Let me go and sit there. Fine, agreed. My yoga is very weak and I'm not able to concentrate and focus. But sit down in that vibration because it's a gathering, a sangathan. When many people are sitting together for yoga bhatti, you automatically will get energy from the surroundings because the surroundings have been empowered by the yoga bhatti. So this was just one example. So Mama said that whichever service you are called for, like for example, I must applaud these uh, souls who have really taken this um, effort of getting up daily in the morning at five o'clock uh, particularly Rakhi Ben and many others, the entire team. I don't know who else is there today as well. Then Sister Amy is there, Rakhi Ben is there, Vimish Bhai. They have taken this, that we have to do this seva because this is the call of the time. You, I, I hope you know that all this English Murli seva started after the Hindi, which is already going on since before COVID times. So this English Murli started, these two, three souls were instrumental. And I think so many Zoom babies of Baba, quite a few of you are Zoom babies, right? You all know when I say Zoom babies, you all came into knowledge through Zoom. <clears throat> so sustaining them, revising Avyak Murlis is a big job and doing it on a daily basis, 5 to 6 a.m., that important time of yours. Some people want to sleep at that time. Many people have many other things to do at that time, but they have really taken it as a commitment with full dedication and full effort, they are doing it. So that is the seva, the need of that hour, which they have really performed. So similarly, all of us are doing service at some or the other level. So have I able, have I been Swaraj Adhikari in that, that my mind weakness has gone, I'm empowered now, my sanskars are in my control, my intellect is taking proper decisions and this way I am able to do seva. So. This is what I felt uh, you all answered as well. Thank you for that. So now let's move on to the other Murli as well. 
And as I told you that uh, 1972 November, 22nd November, foreign seva hasn't even started, but Baba is telling in 72 itself. So you can imagine now it's too late. We are revising, but it still feels that this murli is appropriate for today's day. So Baba is saying that the final form of the final service, what is it? If you all can start answering in the chat box again. That's what Baba said, which you all revised yesterday, right? What is the final form of the final service? I can unmute and speak if you wish again. Yes, answers are coming. So all of them burn down to one aviak stage, which is very beautifully mentioned by you all in different forms. Angelic form of light, complete and perfect form. A lighthouse, LH, beautiful short form, Bijit Bhai, you are trying to challenge my memory. I was wondering initially what is LH and then I realized it's lighthouse. Yes, so having said that, let's now uh, understand this Murli in depth and you all can come up with your sharings as well. Uh, so it is like I need to, is there really a dress of an angel which I really need to wear so that I look light, light, everything is light, light? So it's actually not a physical light. It's basically against Hiti. It's my stage which should be light. Baba has mentioned many things uh, in this. Baba is saying Taj, Tilak and Takt. Taj is the crown. Tilak is this which we apply here and Takt, Takt is the throne. So Baba has mentioned many such things, but it's all in a, on a very subtle level, Baba is trying to say that. So it's not that really we are having a crown on the head, which is a crown of light. No, it is a stage of being light. Whereby again, am I ever ready? Come what may in life, am I able to be light inside, in the mind, is the thought process stable, not having racing thoughts and waste thoughts. And similarly, if I look at this forehead, the tilak of light, the light coming from my eyes, from the forehead and also from the heart, what does that mean? It again, it's not about a physical light. It's about my drishti. So say from the eyes, am I able to look at each other when I say look, I'm looking at the physical body of all the people around me, but at to what extent have I realized that even they are beautiful souls like I am? A big stage to develop. Same thing is Baba is saying the eyes and the heart are very close to each other. So through the heart, am I light? What does that mean? Like when we say feelings, Mansa Seva, though we say Mansa Seva serving through the mind, but it is giving pure wishes and good feelings. And where do, they come, where do they come from? Usually they come from the heart. That's what people say in the Lokic world. So am I really able to have from my heart these two feelings? And as always, Baba says, Rahim Dil, which means a merciful heart. Am I really having mercy for souls? Because these souls are still wandering. They haven't really identified Baba. And how can I reveal Baba to them? It is only through my actions, through my lightness in all these so many different aspects. There can be so many such different things through all the faculties which we have discussed so far. And this is what is being a lighthouse. And once I am light in all these aspects, then I can really become bodiless in a second. I sit in yoga. I just consider myself to be a soul. And then that's what we practice today becoming bodiless because bodiless stage or shariri avastha that's what baba says in this murli in a second if you can do that you'll become a lighthouse which means you are just uh, there are i think i don't know which murli was that we covered I, I only covered it a few days ago it was about are you there were three stages the first one was are you just a bulb of light which means illuminating only maybe one room or so Second is, are you a searchlight? Which means when you, now all of us have searchlights in our mobile phones, 
when we are traversing somewhere in the dark spots on the road, we try to on our searchlights so that we can see around. So it's slightly much more better than a bulb which is illuminating only the room. And the third one is a lighthouse whereby lighthouse means it can really spread far and wide the light. So similarly, what is my stage? Am I just able to give a vision from my stage only a few people at home? That is a light bulb. Search light for people who are wandering, wandering souls, wandering in unhappiness, wandering in peacelessness, so on and so forth. Am I able to give them solace? Or lighthouse means fully behad in unlimited for the entire world. Am I able to do that? So that's what Baba says that when the time of destruction appears, this stage of yours is very much needed. And by having this form of light, Baba says the next question for you all, and you all can elaborate on this. Baba says you have to develop these two qualifications. What are those two qualifications? Does anyone remember if you want to share it? One is called, again, they are Hindi words, Master Trikal Darshi and Master Jani Jananhar. Right? So, Jani Jananhar means Janna is to know. And Trikal Darshi is also to know the three Darsh. Darsh means to see the three Kal, the three times. Am I really with my mind intellect able to see clearly, very clearly, with a lot of clarity that yes, whatever is happening is the best in this confluence age. Whatever has happened, whatever negative also was best. And to come in the future, it will be something more than best. The perfect thing is coming. And do I know the secrets of drama? That is Master, Master Jani Jananhar. So looking at the upheaval outside, am I really able to create this thought that yes, all is happening for good because a beautiful time is coming, a beautiful age is coming. All this is the cleaning up process for the golden age. If destruction of this old world doesn't happen, when will the, how will the new world come into being or come into existence? So that's what this Murli, if you have any other points, because it was a beautiful two, it was a brief Murli, but very powerful two page Murli. So how do I develop on this uh, angelic form or subtle form? How do I develop that? Which also Baba mentioned how to practice a final stage. Again, so let me just go further. You all have already shared about uh, rays of light coming. So again, as I said, both of you, Radhamani and Girija sister, have shared that costume is of light, crown is of light, decoration is of light. But again, we have to understand in the perspective, they are not physical costume, physical crown and physical decoration. It is something on a very subtle level. Again, the next thing is injection of remembrance. So Baba mentioned a lot about how do you inject yourself with remembrance so that, you know, when uh, drug addicts take an injection of whatever drug they are instilling in their body, they remain in that, lost in that, they become an embodiment of that drug, I must say. So same thing, Baba wants us to become Smriti Swaroop, an embodiment of remembrance. And how can that happen? I'll have started answering. Thank you for that. So, Sister Girija is saying that accurate thoughts, yatharat, right? So you have to work on your mind, make sure that our mind, because intellect comes later for the decision. For the decision, my thoughts should be very clean. That's one. So Usha is saying elevated thoughts, yes. Sreshd sankal. And Balvinder is adding to that. So quite practical point that becoming free from attachments, which we say Nashto Moha and three other things, bondages, dependencies and addictions. So we have to start working on all of them. And therefore each day we should live for that day and see my entire day. And therefore a beautiful routine which Baba has set that 
from Amrit Vela onwards till the time you go to bed, whatever time that may be, usually it should not be more than 10, because in Hindi, Baba says, thus, Abbas, which means enough, the day activities are enough, now it's time to retire. So am I able to, at that point of time, when I'm finishing my day, look at my entire day, what has happened? And on the contrary, Dadi Janki used to say, again, Baba has also mentioned that gone are those days now whereby you're checking only at the end. There should be a checking on and off constantly. I did something, some Vikaram, I spoke harshly. I felt a little bit of jealousy inside. I got disturbed by something. I'm in the traffic jam. So just keep checking your mind constantly. And that is the thing, because check and change, which Baba says, can only happen not at the end of the day after 12 hours. It has to happen on and off. So I think that's what it is about, this Murli. And in the end, also Baba uh, mentions one more thing that uh, it reminds me here of uh, what Baba has shared as well before. In the West, uh, they don't believe in Devi Devtas, in deities. Deities are typically something from the East, India, Indian subcontinent, maybe Malaysia, Malaysia Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, all that, South Asia and Southeast Asia. If you go further up North, China, Japan, they don't really believe in God. So forget having visions, but they are thought to be more Buddhist, right? And then if you come towards the West, the entire US, UK, Canada, all these areas, South America as well, highly Christian oriented uh, societies. So they believe in something called angels. So Baba said in the final time, your final service would be that the souls from the West, when they look I mean, there's a lot of upheaval going on. And what they want to do, they want to, they want sort of a little bit of solace from you all. And how will that happen when they'll gaze into the sky, they can see angels moving around in white clothes, white dresses. Similarly, in India, this part of the world, the East, because they have constant astha and faith in the deities. So they will have visions from you of the deities. So they will see that, oh yes, Hamare Isht Aage. Isht means, in India we say Isht means is the, uh, the family uh, deity which they usually worship. So they can see, oh yes, I have been constantly remembering my this deity, say Krishna Kabhak, Ram Kabhak, etc., etc. And they will see the visions of that in the sky. So each to his own, whoever wants, whatever they want, they get it through you all. And that can only happen through my elevated stage. And lastly, also Baba mentioned about that science is doing its work. Obviously, science is helping a lot to uh, what? To take, to wipe out everything, to clean up and everything. So Baba is saying that it is silence that science has copied. It is silence that science has copied from, which means that whatever scientific discoveries happen through the scientists, they sit in silence and do right. The invention of uh, atom bomb, etc., all that is through scientists. So one, Baba, one day Baba says this science also will fail when all the satellites will crumble. I mean, nothing will remain. All your mobile phones, there'll be no electricity around. That is also science. And at that point, then, science, which has been born from silence, when science has given up, nothing else you can do now, silence will again come. And it is silence through us, through our stage, which is so elevated. Over a period of long period of time, we have accumulated that power. Will that then be used? So again, Balvinder is saying, constantly, consciously creating these high vibrational frequencies. And rather than creating, I just need to be an embodiment of that. And then automatically things will radiate for me. Again, Sister Girija says, nothing attracts me towards myself. Becoming the form of light. 
and finally radhamani sister says the victory to silence so i think so let's maybe sit in meditation and do that if you all want to share a few more things otherwise i think we can do more meditation so the final gist of both these murlis is about how to develop this stage of a sharira sthiti and once you are a sharira sthiti everything is light your decoration costume crown vibrations everything really becomes light yes, so i think someone wants to share i can hear someone parish bhai this one churning which uh, i wanted to uh, ask and this was um how to parallelly work on your stage and perform service because at times as a conversation is if my stage is not right and if i go for service i'm doing disservice so how do one work on both the things together yes interesting let me give you an example here of the dadis because i am not an authority on these things i feel so uh, i think it was dadi prakash mani yeah so uh, one of the sisters was supposed to go and take the murli at the center which she was instrumental for she had lot of headache and i think it was dadi janki also both these examples i'll share with you so uh, she said didi uh, dadi i have lot of headache can i uh, not go for the murli so dadi said kya bolti ho headache hai that's fine go and read the murli how can you skip the murli time you are on the gaddi of baba you are what we call the master uh, like teacher right you are the teacher there you are reading baba's murli start reading the murli your headache will automatically go off same thing dadi janki shared that once she was not feeling very well and then she told one of the sisters over there that um, i think it was some senior sister that can i not go for this murli because i am not feeling very right my stage is not very good for some particular seva so they said no go for the seva start putting yourself in that seva and your stage will automatically set up so i think both these are very closely interlinked if i am not feeling right lot of waste is going on don't feel that i will be doing this service at that point of time just surrender yourself to baba if you're having a headache just go and listen to the murli and the uh, listen to the murli or maybe even reading the murli if you are doing that job you see automatically your stage starts getting elevated so i think that's what we need to understand <clears throat> that uh, come what me we are now brahmans we are all on this journey a beautiful journey everyone is number wise we know that very well and let's not because it's a very limiting thought when i have this thought oh i'm not feeling etc etc i may become my stage is still not good i may do some disservice no this thought itself is a thought of disservice so let us not go into that direction of creating such thoughts let us just surrender ourselves fully to baba and then baba will take care because uh, the transformation of world is not my task it is baba's task baba as uh, i must say baba has so much of confidence in me all of you agree that uh, we have become brahmans chalte chalte or we really wanted to become bks did anyone know what bks are all about did you know that you will become a brahman you will become vegetarian leave all the other stuff etc all the vices did you know that so it's baba's baba has chosen we are the we are baba's chosen ones so we really we are not uh, elected we are selected by him i must say so baba wants us and therefore just uh, i must say let down all those inhibiting thoughts uh, maybe in the dream keep it aside and let me let baba use me and the moment i keep doing this uh, today's uh, avyak murli which is being revised soon you all will be it is 14th of march 94 94 murlis are going on it's about baba loves me so much i love baba baba loves me so what is the return now i can give to baba it is again turn myself the return of love is to turn myself which means to transform myself so i know there'll still be a lot of weaknesses but let me just 
surrender to Baba. Let me present myself to Baba. Baba, just use me and Baba will take care of those things. So I don't know how much this answer was able to satisfy you. It, it did get me an access to just be okay. in yeah. the moment and move yeah. ahead. Move ahead. And surrender to Baba. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Manoj Bhai, for that. Thanks, thanks for that. And I'm sure there are many more. See, when we are sitting on this stage on a Sunday churning, it doesn't really mean at all that I'm perfect and complete. Some pun, some pun, no. Even I am on my own journey. I know my weaknesses. So I think you all can also share since we have a few more minutes. Om, Om yeah. Shanti, brother. See, when in the last paragraph of the Mudli, when Baba says, become a form of light, I think when that one thing which <laughs> Baba said, being bodiless, I could get that vision of light. But that one sentence which he speaks about newness, you will only have that thought and the person who has to carry out and practice will also have that thought that he has to do it. So this one sentence carries so much. Today's mind readers are able to do all that, find out what the others want. But here it is something different in the final stage. So how do I really get what I am doing, what I want others to do, and they get it and they do it? It's not only harmony of thought and action within my mind, but also in their minds. I think that that's something very unique, as Baba said, newness. Could you please throw some light on it? Yeah, so I think uh, if we have a perfect yoga daily, we'll get a lot of new experiences. And that's what Baba says all the time that Anubhav ki authority banu, naya naya anubhav karo in yoga. Like many people just, if you say daily, I'm a Shan Swaroop, I'm an embodiment of peace, you just really get bored. So the moment you practice this being very light, a shariri sthiti, being bodiless, Baba gives you new experiences because when we are bodiless, we are truly Baba Saman in that whatever moments we are able to practice, maybe in an hour, I think a few seconds, I'm sure many will agree because it's a skip soft, that volcanic yoga, which we say, Bindu Swarup Siti Volcanic. At that time, when we are really Baba Saman in that, then Baba uses you because Baba is also the ocean of newness and ocean of creativity. So we need to do that. And uh, I can see uh, Sister Balvinder is asking about how to become an embodiment. Like, I think uh, we should not be churning on our weaknesses. We just have to actually just keep doing it. Keep working on your stage. It's only then you'll be able to, as you have mentioned about self change. No one can change my thought pattern. Can anyone change? Not really. So I can't keep sort of cribbing on this that, oh, I'm not still able to change. I just have to do it someday. And it is all in my hands. So I just have to do it. So I think, hope that answers. And that's it. So, uh, so let's try to bring, as Sister Girija is saying, the subtle region here. Let's try to practice this very elevated stage. Should we do that in the next five, ten minutes? Or anyone else has a few more sharings? You're welcome to do that. And I think, good, it's silence, perfect silence that you know, sometimes uh, I feel that in Murli churnings also, there should be a little bit of silence. That is, the, too many questions, too many discussions really don't serve the purpose of going into the Ursharidi stage, the stage of being bodiless. So now maybe it's just 5.46 for whatever next 10 minutes or so. Let's not keep churning about the points. No, that is not Ursh. Ursharidi sthiti yoga is quite... A yoga, you have to master it. A you means everyone, including me. So don't churn now. Just try to situate in one particular stage for a while. Not being thoughtless, I don't mean to say that. But take one stage and try to go in the depth of that. And whatever you feel, seeing point of light, being point of light, whatever you find, feel, but stick on to that one stage for a while. 
and then move on to some other stage. So to make it uh, more conducive, I'll just uh, play some soft music as well. And I'll again give you not a commentary, but a few points and let us try to be situated in those stages. Let's practice the stage of being bodiless. Situate yourself in this one powerful thought. I, the soul, child of the Supreme Soul, Similar to the Supreme Soul, Bab Saman. And let's go into the depths of this experience of being Bab Saman. And now for the next three, four minutes, let me be away from sound and my dependencies on any of this meditation music as well. And try to enjoy the sweet silence.
experience this elevated stage of yours. See how light you're feeling. Just one thought, I, the soul, Bab Saman. Just surrender everything to Baba. And let him use you and give you new experiences. As we come back, experiencing this beautiful bodiless stage, <clears throat> it's the start of the day. Let's be ready for what Baba wants me to be used for in service today. Om Shanti. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Manoj Bhai. Thank you, Divine Family. And let's experience the bodiless stage by checking ourselves for the whole day. And we meet tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Thank you. <laughs>